Hello, this is a short video for data collection of the pH by indicators lab in Chem 104. Um, I just wanted to show you a little bit about how this, how we're set up here. Here are the uh, seven different indicators that are going to be used. We got thymol blue, bromophenol blue, bromocreosol green, bromocreosol purple, bromothymol blue, phenol red, and Allerzan yellow. Um, along with that, I have a little beaker. Whoops, I'm sorry, I can't say. It says rinse beaker with a, a stir bar in it. This is just distilled water, and the idea is that um, I'm going to use that glass rod to mix together the uh, the the sample and the indicators, and I want to rinse it off in between the different uh, different indicators. Um, over here, we'll just move the roll over a little bit. Here are the known solutions that we'll be measuring uh, the pH of using the indicator. So we have some sodium acetate and hydrochloric acid, and you'll see all of those as we go along. So below us, I have here's a this is called a spot plate, and it has these indentations that I'm going to be mixing the indicator with the solution in it and I kind of labeled it along um, sort of next to the uh, the uh, spots which indicator is going to go in so I'm going to go through and do each of the solutions being tested um, one by one with all the indicators and so oh first off I should show you in case there's a here's a this might be helpful here is a, a colored chart of the um, of the uh, of the indicator table in your in your uh, note or in your lab manual. So this may be helpful uh, as you go along, and you might want to refer back to it. So now I'll just show you the general procedure for. I'm gonna do this um, for the first uh, sample being tested is distilled water. So I'll put a little piece of paper here. Remind us it's distilled water. I'm gonna put three or four drops of distilled water into each of the of seven wells. Oops. So that's plenty. And then I'm going to put one drop of each indicator in the well, or I'll try. So that's thymol blue. And then we got bromophenol blue. Bromocresol green. It's also sometimes it's called brome cresol green. Some I don't know. These these dyes they use different names. Sometimes they have the O in those cresols and sometimes they don't. He's bromocresol purple. Bromothymol blue. Phenol red, and then alizarin yellow, or I think that's how you say it. Oh, maybe I forgot the water there. There's a little water in it. And I'm going to take a stir rod and mix each of them. I'm going to rinse the stir rod in between.
these are kind of pale those two colors but I think that's just maybe I should add a little bit more indicator Let me add one more drop for the bromothymol blue because and the bromocresol purple they're pretty pretty pale colors right now All right, and then let me sort of zoom in for you. Hopefully you'll get a, so you can get a better look at these colors. So I'm afraid you'll have to remember where the, which indicators and which one by looking uh, just a little bit earlier in the video. But there are the colors for distilled water. So here's the next solution being tested. It's uh, 0.1 molar sodium acetate. And we have the indicators um, in the same wells as, as before and labeled on the page. Uh, I mixed three drops of sodium acetate, 0.1 molar, with one or two drops of each of the indicators. Um, mixed, mixed each well with a, with a glass rod, rinsing in between. So let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better or maybe take a little bit more note of what's going on all right now we have the third sample this is 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid um, and again we have the the dyes in their same the same positions and about three drops of hydrochloric acid which you, with uh, one or two drops of each dry dye let me zoom in a little Here's the next solution. It's 0.1 molar acetic acid, and um, we got different, uh, slightly different colors than we than we did on the last one. So, let me zoom in, and you can get a better, I, a better picture of what's going on. I would say there looks to be like a little black dot in the phenol red. I think it's a maybe a little piece of rubber that broke off from the dropper uh, the eyedropper I was using for the phenol red so uh, just disregard that I have I've forgotten to mention but what I do in between each solution is uh, this these the small enough the solutions are small enough that I can just rinse them down the drain so I take the the uh, well plate and I rinse it with deionized water dry it and then use it again So here we have the next sample, it's 0.1 molar sodium carbonate. Yeah, we definitely got some different colors now compared to earlier ones. Let me again zoom in so you can get a better picture or better idea. Try to be descriptive. You know, we got blues and purples here and try to try to describe them as detailed as possible. It's good to make detailed observations of your experiments.
here's the next sample. We have 0.1 molar ammonium hydroxide. A lot of times that's also just written as 0.1 molar ammonia. Um, whenever ammonia is dissolved in water, it, uh, it undergoes a reaction. And so um, that's why you can kind of see these two different names. Everything looks pretty good. I might have another little piece of rubber in the bromo cream saw green uh, set, or, uh, uh, well. Let's zoom in so you can see a little bit better what's going on. Here's the last, or the next to last solution, excuse me. It's 0.1 molar aluminum sulfate. And um, here everything uh, has been combined and mixed up. And let me zoom in so you can see a little closer what the colors are like. Here's the last solution that we're going to try to determine the pH of using indicators. It's an unknown buffer solution. You don't have to determine what the buffer is, but you need to estimate what the pH of the, of the buffer solution is based off of the colors in these, um, in these indicators. So that's all the data for this uh, laboratory. Um, the unknown, I'm sorry, I didn't write down, the unknown number should be reported on the Canvas uh, page for, along with this video. Um, good luck.